Now if there's an Achilles heel for embroiderers, it's got to be small lettering. And if you've done contract work in embroidery, I'm sure you've said these words. How small do you want it? Well, we're going to find out just how small you can go, so stay tuned and keep watching. Hey everyone, John here from the Deers Embroidery Legacy, and if you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and ring that bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. Now the first thing I'm going to do is show you all of the things we're going to need to do this experiment. Now the first thing we're going to cover is thread, and I'm using the same brand of thread for both the 40 and 60 weight. That way we'll have sort of an equal playing field when we visually go to see the results. Now the 40 weight thread is the standard thread for machine embroidery, and when we did commercial embroidery 25, 30 years ago, we used 40 weight thread like 90, 95% of the time because it was much easier to run the same thread, not have to keep track of switching over thread and needles. We wanted to be as production friendly as possible, so we tried to digitize all of our designs specifically for this thread weight. For this example, we are going to use the 60 weight thread, which means we will have to modify the actual lettering, but we should be able to get much finer results because it is a finer thread. Now for the needles, we are again using the same manufacturer and I have my 7511s which are standard machine embroidery needle sizes using a 40 weight thread. And for the 60 weight thread, I'm switching it over to a 65.9 which gives me a thinner shaft and eye of the needle. And that way we'll be able to get you know, cleaner results. We have to remember that no matter what we're doing with embroidery, we're always hammering a needle with thread through material and it's making penetrations and it's causing a lot of movement and distortion. You're actually adding something to the base fabric and that's why embroidery is very much different with regards to print. We are taking something that is foreign and it's being applied to an existing object and when we hammer in all those stitches, we're changing the foundation of the object that's being sewn. Now I am going to embroider on the best possible scenario because I'm going to try to do lettering that most people would think is impossible. So I'm going to embroider on some of our twill and this poly twill actually has a PVC backing. So it's going to be as sturdy as sturdy can be and I'm going to hoop it without any stabilizer whatsoever. Keep in mind if you want to do really, really small lettering, you have to be realistic about what it's being sewn on. If it is a very loose weave, you know, PK knit or golf shirt material, you're going to lose that lettering within all the hills and the valleys or the nap of the material. So I need to make sure that for this test, I have the best possible application and results as, as I can, because I want to see just how legible I can get really, really small text to be. Now the last thing I'll mention is I am going to use a magnetic pre-wound bobbin for both the 40 and 60 weight. I'm going to make sure that I run the same speed for both thread weights. I'm going to run it at 600 stitches per minute and I'm going to be running it within one hooping on a baby lock 10 needle machine. So we should be able to get a good comparison of the two. Now we'll quickly dive into the lettering and exactly how I'm going to set it up based on the thread weight and the actual size of the lettering itself. Now I've laid out my text and I made sure I put a color change for both the 40 and 60 weight because it will need to switch from one thread to the other. And I'm going to quickly go through each of the sizes in each weight so that you can get a little bit of an overview of the densities and some of the other changes that I might have made. So if I'm looking at the first one, which is going to be a six millimeter font. Now we've digitized uh, ESA fonts, which are embroidery specific alphabets for the Wilcom and Hatch platform. And these are object based fonts. They are not stitch files that have been converted to keyboard lettering. They are the actual original data that means that you can modify them, change things like pull compensation, density, and the size, and it basically sees it as a vector type piece of artwork that has stitches. So you're always gonna get much better results with a native keyboard font as exposed to a stitch file that's been converted to a keystroke. So these are native e uh, ESA fonts, and I did digitize some small fonts. They range between six to eight millimeters, and I only have one six millimeter font that I've created, and it is actually called 
block jock six millimeters. I always include the, uh, I guess, suggested minimum size of the font beside the actual font name, and that way people have a guideline. Generally, you can go up in size a lot better than you can go down, but I, I usually safely say you can go, you know, 10% down, but we're gonna try to go past those, I guess, safety zones, but going past the safety zones, I'm gonna have to make sure that I make some adjustments to the settings and just don't use the defaults that I assigned for the original size. So looking at the first one, I have the six millimeter highlighted on the screen, and if I look at the actual density, I turned it off of auto spacing, and I defaulted to 0.5 millimeters. For something really, really small, I wanna actually loosen the density. Usually for regular embroidery, for regular size text, I would keep it at the you know, auto spacing, which would, depending on the fabric type you choose, would be a, around 4, uh, 0.4 millimeters of space between each of the stitches. Uh, if it is a different fabric, it might you know, lessen a little bit to 0.36. If it's actually tie silk or leather, then the stitch length will sort of widen within that auto spacing setting. But I can always turn that off and default to manual spacing. Now, anytime you, you know, go off the default, it's usually best to play with those settings if you kind of know what you're doing. And that's why in this scenario, I'm gonna go through all the changes that I make. So 0.5 millimeters is what I have for the spacing between all the stitches on the density. And then under the effects, I didn't change anything, but under the stitches, I kept it to a center run with a fairly short stitch length. And I uh, adjusted the pull compensation to 0.2 millimeters. That means that it will actually overthrow the stitches a little bit on either side, the direction of the stitches, to allow for the pull compensation. That is the reaction of the top thread and the bobbin thread creating a stitch and pulling on each other and it kind of sinks it in a tiny little bit. So I want to make sure there's a bit of pull compensation there to make sure I'm going to get clean results. But I don't want too much and I don't want none at all. There has to be a little bit of a, a happy medium. And I did mention that I'm running the machine speed at 600 all the way through. A little trick that I used to have with the Shifley and commercial embroidery when we ran our multi-heads and our Shifley machines, when we were doing really small lettering, and if the tensions would be pulling and you might lose that lettering into a garment, we would actually slow the machine right down so that it would draw less pull compensation. And if I wanted to be, my, if I wanted my lettering to be a little bit, you know, tighter and cleaner, meaning that it would actually reduce the amount of pull, I'd speed the machine right up because the faster the machine goes, the more it's going to actually pull and adjust it to, you know, come in a little bit on either side. Now, being that I'm just running at a standard stitch uh, speed, I am going to set it at 0.2. Now the next one, which is five millimeters, so I'm going from the six millimeter, which is my suggested size for this font at you know, a 40 weight thread. But if I go to five millimeters, I'm really not gonna change the settings at all. I left it pretty much the same because you know, it's, it's going down a bit, you know, 20%-ish overall, maybe a little bit more, but it's not going to necessarily uh, reflect that much change that's needed. But when I am going from six millimeters to four millimeters, that's over 30% reduction in the size. And there I did make some allowances. So I did actually increase the spacing. I lessened the density even more to 0.6 millimeters and I did turn off the underlay altogether. Normally I always have underlay on when I do embroidery designs, but because this is getting so, so small, I don't wanna risk the underlay popping outside of the satin stitch area. And I did actually keep the pull compensation the same, so it should still sew with fairly good results. Now this is where things really get interesting because we are switching now to the 60 weight thread and I'm going to show you the values that I use for 60 weight. I actually did lessen the pull compensation. I didn't increase it, I lessened it from 0.2 to 0.1. So there's just a little bit of pull comp going off on either side. And I still have a center run at the four millimeter size because you know I, I think it should be okay because the thread is actually thinner, which means that 
in the 40 weight, I didn't trust that that underlay thread would stay under the satin, but because this is a thinner thread, I'm actually trusting that it will at this size. And if I look at the actual density, I've changed it to 0.35 millimeters. And it was actually point, uh, what was six, I think I did for the other one. So I actually added a lot of density to this, which is going to increase the stitch count. That's something that people have to remember when you switch from a 40 to a 60 weight thread, you're gonna get finer detail, but you're going to need more stitches in the final stitch count of the design. Now the next one, is going to three millimeters. And this is uh, getting kind of to the danger point. If you would ask somebody if they would do a three millimeter font with upper and lower case, they'd probably give you a blank look like you're crazy, but we're gonna give it a try. And this one here, I actually have the same density, so I kept the same density, and as far as the pull comp, it is the same, but you will notice that I did turn the underlay completely off. I now don't trust that my underlay stitches, if they do go over each other twice with a single pass, because you need to travel somewhere, it might actually pop out, and I want this to be as clean as possible, so I'm not gonna press my luck. Now this one is what I would call embroidery insanity, a two millimeter font. And that means, you know, we're talking a two millimeter font, but that's upper and lower case, it gets even smaller. And I, you know, crossing my fingers on this one because if this is legible, I will actually be really, really impressed. Keep in mind that any font is only as good as the digitizer. So I do have a little bit of faith with my digitizing experience and knowing that I have digitized some crazy small things in the past. So looking at this on screen at my set size, which is six to one, if you've ever taken my education, you know I have a lot of foundational rules that I didn't actually come up with. I was taught by multi-generational punchers, by people who did this for a living far before you know I was born. So with this one, I'm actually using the same, uh, I guess, underlay, which is none. I'm using the same pull compensation, but when I go to my density, I've kept it the same as well. I, I just thought that I'm pressing my luck on this. I don't want to you know, decrease the density at all because I still want it to look clean. This is a very, very thin weight thread. So we're gonna save this to our USB. We're gonna knock it on the machine. We're going to uh, cross our fingers, cross our toes, and hope for the best. So let's see how it stitches in. Well, as you saw, the machine sewed out, no issues whatsoever, no thread breaks, nothing bad happened at all. Took it off the machine. I purposely didn't sit there and watch it because I was a little nervous, but I gotta be honest, this is insanity. I can actually read that small two millimeter font and just because I knew what it said and my mind would automatically fill in the blanks, I did take this upstairs to Jennifer, my wife, and I said, can you read that lettering? And she read it exactly what it said, embroidery legacy, yeah, she's part of the business, but she even got the two millimeter part. So this is uh, insane. We did a two millimeter upper and lower case font successfully. It's all about the settings of the design, making sure that you put a little bit of theory into it and you can get good results keeping in mind I did run it on the best case scenario but if I did do this in certain applications or treated it as an applique uh, I could actually get the same results on a wearable item so there's always different ways to solve problems and this is one way that you can solve your small lettering problems and impress it keeping in mind this was done with a keyboard font so I hope you enjoyed this and make sure you uh, see us next time